very good morning friend this is your host Sandeep Dhaiya and today we are going to learn about integration of Active Directory with Exchange Server 2030 in this video I'm going to explain the relationship of Active Directory with Exchange 2013 how exchange is totally depend on active directory what are the component and i'm going to discuss the relationship of exchange with active directory from the database perspective to uh, the application perspective <coughs> so let me start so now i'm to going to show you a presentation and this ppt basically represent the relationship of Active Directory with Exchange. <coughs> so now we can see that we have Active Directory structure one side, then the relation of that structure with Exchange. So we'll start with uh, Active Directory Forest, and then we'll be able to understand what is the relationship of Active Directory Forest with Exchange. So Forest, right? So, as you know, uh, Active Directory uh, create a single forest with a single namespace, right? For example, uh, Contoser.com is a forest, right? That forest might have multiple namespace, right, as a tree, but the forest name should be a single name, and that name sustain till the end, right? So forest is the last security boundary of active directory then how what is the relation of the forest with exchange so exchange is completely integrated with the active directory so exchange use uh, the same forest right and so like will able to have one forest in one active directory then same way we are able to create only one organization one exchange organization in one forest means we are not able to create more the one more than one exchange organization in one active directory forest okay now we'll talk about <coughs> active directory partitions as you know active directory database is ntds.dit which is a jetblue uh, database which based on uh, ESC extensible storage engine and uh, this database is uh, having uh, partitions uh, so partitions are categorized into two categories mandatory partition and optional partitions when I'm talking about mandatory partitions we have schema partition we have configuration partition and we have domain partition so if I'm talking about the optional partition then we have application partition so if I'm talking about Active Directory database and so we have those four partitions now those four partition somehow used by exchange for storing relevant information in Active Directory to complete the integration so we'll start with schema partition right so as uh, everyone aware schema is basically uh, defining the classes and attributes so now we'll talk about the same thing when I want to install exchange then exchange is having certain classes and attributes of its own and those classes and attributes need to update active directory schema so uh, uh, let's see take the example uh, what are the exchange classes right so uh, as an example you can see that uh <coughs> exchange classes can be exchange specific objects such as agents and connectors and attributes uh, right uh, so uh, might be uh, uh, we have exchange recipients or users or groups so uh, so to manage the property of uh, those users or groups we need to have certain attributes from where we can manage objects settings 
example take the example like if you'll go to uh, a user property then you'll find out uh, settings for a web application or might be unified communication right <coughs> so uh, as you know uh, so these kind of classes and attributes integrate with active directory and help exchange right for uh, exchange object management so now we'll go to the next partition next partition is configuration partition configuration is very important partition and it will store forest wide configuration information about active directory so uh, generally the information include active directory sites where we have all the domain controller and the configuration details about sites so they are able to replicate with each other when i'm talking about the exchange configuration exchange also depend on active directory from the replication perspective because exchange do not have own replication mechanism it is totally integrated with active directory so it use active directory uh, <coughs> replication methodology for all kind of replications so when i'm talking about the exchange configuration what kind of configuration we store in configuration partition of active directory so which can have uh, like uh, you can see um uh, address list address box policy administrative group client access settings connections mobile mailbox settings global settings monitoring settings system policies retention policies and transport settings so these kind of exchange configuration is stored inside configuration partition of active directory <coughs> now we'll switch to the domain partition so as i told you all the objects which we create in active directory they store inside the domain partition so object including users groups or use so now when we'll talk about the exchange generally exchange prefer two types of object from active directory one is user object and another is group object so we'll able to provide the the mailbox to an user object and we can create distribution group right so those objects are going to store inside the domain partition of active directory but used by the exchange right so we can assign able to assign the mailbox to those objects uh, as for the, the optional partition of active directory exchange 2013 does not use application partition at all so apart from the, the active directory partitions now we'll have one more thing as a global catalog very very important feature of active directory that used by exchange server and exchange server is depend on that so <coughs> global catalog server gcs uh, gcs basically hold the parcel uh, information about uh, the objects of active directory forest right so then I if it stored the parcel information about uh, uh, entire forest objects definitely when exchange need information about any object it will use global catalog servers so the type of integration which we have between a global catalog and exchange so exchange generally use global catalog server for obtaining the gal which is uh, called global address list so one user one exchange user want to access another user who might belong to another domain controller in active directory forest so with the help of gal that user is able to search another user inside the address list right and that gal is provided by global catalog server to the exchange server <coughs> exchange 2013 transport service access global catalogs to find the location of a recipient mailbox when message deliver 
means if a one one user want to send a message to another user when the request reached to the client access server client access server send the query to global catalog server to get to know about the second recipient right so and then from that recipient will get to know about the mailbox server where that recipient store so in that way a global catalog server will help the client access server to identify the location of the mailbox server now we'll talk about the third advantage client access server access global catalog to locate the mailbox server of user and display the global address list so so now you can able to see that exchange server is tightly integrated with active directory but now the question is that how so what is the service or a solution which work between active directory and exchange to make this integration happen now i am taking you to uh, uh, to the exchange server and i want to show you how this integration works <coughs> so now we are going to a server so now we are into a server which is a mailbox server so now i want to show you right how this integration is work so we are going to the services when i click services.msc i am able to see a list of services now from that list i want to uh, click uh, on microsoft exchange services then in microsoft exchange services i just want to tell you there is a service which help to uh, create this integration between exchange and active directory and the name of service is microsoft exchange active directory topology service <coughs> this service is basically having the dependency of all the other services now you can see that all exchange services are basically connected to Microsoft Exchange Active Directory topology service so this topology service basically provide the interface to exchange server right so means this topology service contact with active directory application partitions and retrieve the information and cache to exchange server and exchange server will use that particular service uh, that information to identify the objects and other resource and uh, able to use active directory right so now we'll able to see that i am not able to stop this service if i want to stop this service it automatically try to stop all the other services in my system so now you have to wait and you'll able to see that after certain time period you will get a failure here because if this service will stop then we are not able to use active directory service in exchange and exchange is not able to communicate with active directory if it is not able to communicate with active directory so we are not able to create a, or delete or modify or do any change in, in any kind of object so <coughs> we'll able to see that now you'll able to see that i got a message and the message is uh, windows could not stop microsoft exchange active directory topology service on the local computer and the error code is 1051 just a stop control has been sent to service that running other services are dependent on means uh, this service is dependent on another services and we are not able to stop it at any cost right i hope you this video will help you to understand the integration of active directory with exchange server thank you very much